screens and I start showing the uh, the Maya display. Okay. Um, regards to color management, uh, today uh, what I'd like to discuss is regards to color management, right? Um, as a Mimaki is a manufacturer of uh, um, the printer <laughs> cutting products, inks, um, the software, including color management. Um, we can talk about like, uh, hey, you know, the color management and, uh, you know, definitely if customer has concern about the, uh, hey, how we can get better color or how we can get the, uh, you know, actual, you know, the colors what they want, right? So, you know, we have enough tool or, you know, we have enough tool, you know, out from the factory around the already. So it really depends on the, uh, you know, how you can achieve, you know, by utilizing what we have to what customer wants, right? <laughs> so within my 15 years of experience in the field, uh, as I know, the uh, technical, including involvement for the uh, the sales department, marketing department, as uh, as long as Mimaki internally or externally with the dealers, um, there was really less people able to talk about uh, color management regards to the inkjet printer um, in general. So not saying that I can because you know, every single customer, the what they mean by the uh, color management can be different. It can be same, but most of the time it can be different. Or even customer has the less understanding, less knowledge of the, what they are talking about. <coughs> so what we, well, even if you have ever experienced to the customers regards, you know, how the color management work for customer to what customer wants doesn't really doesn't exactly match to what customer wants against to what customer needs to so i just want to kind of you know the simply wrap up in case of a customer wants this how we can approach to the result of it right <coughs> so let's start from here there are many customers saying that they are, hey, we would like to get better color output out of the printer, right? So to do this, there is nothing involved for the color management or color matching. Yes, it's a color management, but it's not really even for color matching. Unless customer has any kind of idea of what color they would like to get. For example, <clears throat> For example, if customer has a specific red color to achieve, while customer is just getting a less, uh, you know, less brilliancy of the red, that way, even customer is saying, hey, I would like to get better color, but that doesn't mean for, for us it's a better color, because where, while customer has specific color they want to achieve today, so that's not really the better color, so customer has a, you know, specific color to achieve. So that's what I know. First of all, I or you need to separate or kind of isolate from what customer says. All right. <clears throat> so this is one of the importance, for example, that if customer say, hey, I would like to get the better color, really depends on if customer has target color or non-target color, but just want some kind of brilliancy, some kind of, you know, worthy of their color. So I will just talk about this, for example, okay? So to get the better color. Better color basically means that they, uh, they would like to get, let me just uh, do this. <coughs> um, just showing you. Um, color space. I think rather than okay, let's put it like this, for example. Right? Can you see this? Um, uh, you know, diagram regards to the color space. All right, this is just a one example or you know, just a one method to show the color space and what this uh, you know, chart means. 
right? If you look at the, this, you know, the curve, uh, looks like the, uh, it's oval, but half, the half oval has like a curve, you know, goes from one way to the other way. And then other line is a straight line to connect from a purple to red, right? This is what we call about color space, right? Color space, you know, has a definition of the, uh, what type of the, uh, you know, color space. That means, uh, you know, for Mimaki specifically, we call this as an input color. You know, it can be, you know, for example, Adobe RGB, sRGB, it can be Fogra, it, it, uh, it, it can be a G7 from US, it can be a you know, Japan Color 2000 or Japan Color 2060, such and such, right? You can probably, you know, the, have heard about this type of the name. This is all what we call as the, uh, we, we, uh, we call as the color space. Right, the color space normally shown as the you know this type of the uh, shape, <coughs> right? And you can see some kind of a triangle here. This triangle basically means as the color gamut, right? Color gamut can be you know that can mean you know the lots of things. For example, if you are working on the inkjet printer and ink, CMYK, this is, a, for example, color gamut of the ink. Color gamut of ink means, you know, no matter what kind of printer you are using, no matter what kind of software is using, by mixing up, let's say, SS21 ink or ES3 ink or any type of the ink, <coughs> this is what you can physically duplicate or create these specific colors. As long as your color, target color is within, let's say this triangle means, you know, color gamut from SS21, for example. SS21 ink would have a capability to make any colors as long as they are within this triangle. This is what the, this, you know, the diagram means. And you can see the you know, smaller triangle, smaller areas triangle. Right, this small areas triangle, you know, it's another color gamut. Right, it can be color gamut from SS21 ink. It can be a color gamut from, let's say, you know, the, uh, you know, ink from, uh, ink from someone else, like a Roland, HP, Muto, whoever, whoever. <coughs> so, in as that example, what this, you know, chart is showing is the you know, within the actual color space we have, what there is. You know, for example, Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB is what supports the you know, color, where Adobe RGB mainly used for their display or the photography. So if you grab you know, one of your camera, you can see you know, what is the color space it supports, and you can even, you know, update or you know, the upgrade or download, whatever it's called, to, you know, that rectifies that the color space. Adobe RGB is kind of the, uh, you know, one of the you know, widest color gamut, the color space in the, you know, photography device. <coughs> and basically this chart, okay, for example, this uh, wider triangle stands for the, uh, you know, Mimaki SS21. And this smaller triangle is what's from a uh, you know, Muto or whatever, the value jet ink, let's say. As that conclusion, what we can say from this chart is, you know, in order to duplicate the color in Adobe RGB, we can only do this amount with SS21 ink, right? So if you want really the, you know, the nice, you know, blue sky color, it's still hard to achieve. If you want like a photo to be duplicated by SS21 ink for the, like if you go to mountain, you take the, where the, you know, or the, how you say, the, you know, ink is melted down with a red or orange color, it's hard to achieve. And if you go to the you know, nice, you know, brilliant, you know, grass field, you know, I don't think you can achieve that color, for example. But at least what we know is the, you know, that we have more gamut, more color productivity than the, you know, muto, uh, muto budget ink, right? Just as an example. <laughs> All right, the so importance from this chart is the ink color cannot achieve, uh, cannot achieve, well, ink color cannot achieve everything, right? So if customer says that, they are, hey, I need to get to the uh, you know, Coca-Cola red, for example, 
or I need to get to the uh, you know orange color for TNT, for example. Those you know, if you need an answer, basically you need to try to print it. Basically, so Mimaki is not the one to actually release the official information of the what's the actual you know color productivity of an LAB value from the you know, ink. Because the reason is because if you only mix the ink without a printer, you can probably achieve easily. But then you know, with printers, you know you have like you know the DPI, the passes, or you know just on the size of the dot and the media's compatibilities. So you can we can say that the hey you know ink can achieve, but you know, ink that printer won't achieve. For example, <laughs> right? Just I know. If you look at this chart, you know that this is just an easy way to understand what this means. Uh, this uh, what this means, right? Uh, okay, let me go back to the uh, you know the original uh, uh, discussion, All right? If customer would like to you know really get, let's say, just a brilliant thing, doesn't matter you know if we achieve this color or not, but just would like to have the brilliant color as possible. All right, I'm gonna show you what the quickest way to well, one of the quickest quickest way to duplicate it, right? So I'm gonna just put a UCJB 300 as an example. <coughs> okay, I've got uh, you know just uh, you know um, uh, the sample photo here. All right, how you could get to the uh, you know the brilliant color? What you can do is first go to a print quality. I think it's uh, too small, so let me just uh, make it uh, bigger for the screen. For uh, one moment, please. Uh, display settings, display two, change to uh, maybe 150 percent. Is that too much? I don't think it's too much. That's I think good. <laughs> Right, this is particularly for UCJV 300. On the UCJV 300, we've got the profile. It's called for the generic PVC gloss and two, right? So what it what this is for? Well, probably some people already know about, but some people, you know, is not aware of this. I'm gonna let, just show you this. Mimaki Australia. Just go to a profile library from a from a website. Go to inkjet printer and go to UCJV 300. <laughs> it's loading now, please stand by. Okay, uh, in the download, uh, just pick up anything. Uh, I think that's available for both areas 170 and uh, 200, but just let me go to the uh, four color areas 170 ink to just show you what it is. I think you feel the same, you know, every time you open the profile list for UCJV 300, it just takes time to load because there are you know, about like, uh, you know, the close to 300 profiles in every page. So it just takes time to, you know, to load it. So just, you know, please bear with me until it shows the profile list. Right? In the profile list, if you scroll it down, well, especially let me just uh, you know, search with a manufacturer with generic. <laughs> and if you scroll it down, this is what it is. Okay, generic PVC gross to uh, the profile. This is the profile that was released uh, about uh, you know, one, 12 months after UCJP 300 was released, right? which has a profile with a good red coloring and the blue contrast, right? So this profile has the, you know, if you if you have ever compared the other profile for like kind of generic PVC gross, uh, you know, the first generation, it's got the um, red color very close to the, uh, how you say, like uh, <coughs> the, 
you know, standard signage printing, like, you know, the, the red is kind of orangish. Like if you do like kind of magenta 100%, yellow 100%, it becomes more to the yellowish and orangish. But this, you know, gross PVC2 profile, it has a red color very close to the uh, more to uh, offset printing or commercial printing side. So you can quickly see the difference of it, right? But anyway, this is the you know, first step. As long as you work on UCJV300, this is the first step you can try for customer to get the, uh, you know, the more brilliant or more high contrast, you know, the, the red and the blue color as a, um, you know, um, as a result. <clears throat> the uh, second thing you can try is in regards to the color matching. In color matching for you know, most, you know, the most recent Mimaki printers in general, the all the you know, printers you know, and the profile select default condition for the color matching says Mimaki expand the colors. Right, Mimaki expand the color already set up the uh, you know the preference the you know reference as the uh, illustration and image the color matching method relative. If you know what what this means, that's okay. If you do not know what this means, you know please wait for you know, another probably thirty minutes. I will explain this one later on as well. <laughs> All right, and on the bottom of it. Input profile, right? RGB and CMYK. So Mimaki Expand Color is the one of the color matching preset we have as a default, one of the default set, <coughs> which started with the UJF, um, you know, the minor upgrade of UJF 3042FX. When we released UGF 3042 FX in 2010, and four years later, the Roland uh, has Roland DG has released the LE, LEF 200 and 300 printers. What they are good for market is the especially in the uh, you know in um, the Japan domestic market. There is one of the uh, how you say one of the benchmark uh, the benchmark category for you know, the people buying the uh, printer. This is what we call the, uh, you know, like end user select or something, something like it's called. What it is, is there, you know, there is lots of unions saying that there, if you wanna print this for airport use, uh, airport signage, you must use this printer. If you would like to, you know, have a job to print for this branding, you must use this printer, such, such a thing. So it's like, I you know, the, you know, the brand comes before, brand comes, before the uh, printer purchase, rather than printer comes after, printer comes before the brand purchase. So, you know, that type of the thing. And what Roland DG did in 2014 was the, you know, the Mimaki's UJF was good for like kind of printing a chart or printing colors or you know, vectors, but it wasn't really good for the you know, printing half toning. So, when, when printing half toning, you know, you can see lots of grayness of the dot. That's the reason Roland was beating the market at that moment. That's the you know, because of the you know imaging technology for the UV uh, UV ink printing, not a solvent, but UV ink printing really beats to the market of the Mimaki. You know, regards to the printing like a Photoshop, printing photography on the like you know, the print uh, printer. You know, the color of your dog, the photo of your dog into the smart smartphone case or personal goods and so on. So Roland was starting the, taking this market at that moment, right? Then we kind of minor upgrade to the, you know, uh, to this uh, UGF 3042 with Mimaki Expand Color. What it is, is the, you know, the basically we've got a new CMYK input color space, which is Mimaki High Contrast. How it works is the, you know, if there is a, you know, image data or artwork data, before the, uh, you know, before the, uh, well, less than the, uh, you know, the certain percent of the density, the machine just uses the lots of small dots, right? So, you know, before we just trying to be like a darker color for, you know, most of the, you know, most of the artwork, that's why we had lots of uh, uh, the large dot to print to just to fill up, you know, lots of ink for the, uh, you know, the, for signage, you know, sign graphics. 
plot for middle turning, you know, we created uh, you know, the Mimaki high contrast, right? To make it, uh, you know, the half turning without, uh, you know, we are uh, with a less grayness. However, <laughs> when printing, like let's say, you know, vehicle wrapping printing for like, uh, you know, the, the certain, you know, density of the red or green or blue, such and such, you will get, you will know that the, it's kind of the, uh, you know, it's kind of washed out because Again, you know, with a high density part, the Mimaki expand color still uses lots of, uh, you know, small dots and middle dots. So if you're looking at the you know, brilliant colors, sometimes Mimaki expand color, you know, may not work. In that case, what you need to change from here is the, uh, you know, well, we can just try test here and do plus. All right, for most of the signage job, you know, if you uh, customize this uh, color matching by yourself, what I would recommend is the, uh, you know, just leave both uh, illustration and image as the perception, right? If people is doing the uh, like offset printing, they kind of care about the quality of the solid color, not a color, uh, not a color of the solid color, but quality of the solid color, then I would say, you know, do saturation, right? Again, I'm gonna give you the idea of what uh, what are they, what what this means, you know, later on. What's more important is here is what input profile to choose. For the job, like uh, you know, the job without uh, for the uh, you know illust uh, for the uh, you know for uh, image, which is you know photography and so on, I'd say you know just choose you know, one of these. It really depends on, you know, not from uh, you know, Mimaki side, but for more to customer side, when they are, use, they are doing a photography editing in a Photoshop, what input, what uh, input profile they are using. Okay, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Otherwise, they need to set one particular, uh, you know, input profile, like a Fogra or like a you know, Japan color and so on. You also need to copy and import that uh, input profile into a uh, you know profile manager within uh you know rastering six so this you know input profile of rgb should be matching with what you have in your you know, artwork you know graphic software so nothing to discuss at this moment because the, you know, it does not really matter because people who is doing the you know more to you know the image the photography, they care about the, you know, the, not the brilliancy, but you know, more color matching. So just say, you know, just import what they have in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, the, you know, the uh, input color, the color space, and just load the same to rasterning. What I'd like to discuss now is the, about the CMYK, when customer says red uh, yellow 100%, magenta 100% to make a good red, right? So, and it did not print a good red. What, what can customer do in the Illustrator side? Well, basically nothing, because they just choose maximum percent of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, yellow and magenta. So what they can do is they change the color space, you know, to send to the uh, you know, raster link. <clears throat> right? As a raster link default, we've got five different, um, five different uh, you know, color space of us. CMYK. Don't worry, you, need, you don't need to match this with the customer, with the Photoshop or Illustrator, <coughs> because Photoshop, you know, will, know, uh, will have no involvement of CMYK, it only comes RGB. While they are doing the CMYK on Adobe Illustrator, there is no color space, you know, you can embed it, you can import into the uh, um, Adobe Illustrator, so you can only choose within the CMYK color space in rastering or any uh, CMYK printer's RIP software. What I recommend is this, write to Mimaki 2013 for sign, all right? This is one of the you know, latest uh, color space we have, especially after we released the orange ink for uh, JV300 solvent series, so it actually picks up the you know what the uh, bri how how brilliant the you know ink can do for eight color setting and it achieved the uh, you know the color you know maximum color set um well maximum color achievement for especially uh, you know magenta orange and red side <coughs> 
I don't really see lots of change for the green and the green or uh, green, uh, blue and purple side, but at least you know, something involves for the orange color. You, know, you can really get the uh, you know the better uh, you know the color intensity. So again, this is uh, one of the trick regards to the uh, uh, regards to the how customer can get better color or more brilliant colors, right? Right. Let's go to the next step regards to the uh, you know color matching, right? Um, Apart from what customers say that you know, I need to achieve better color, so customer who wants like uh, you know the color to be matched or wants to get a better color may have the uh, some type of the uh, some type of the uh, you know uh, the point where they want to achieve. So today I'm telling you that the what's the uh, the most simple way that Mimaki anyone from Mimaki technician. <laughs> can support the customer, right? So without no involvement of the, you know, the different color systems or you know, color softwares and so on, but simply with raster link. This is what we call one of the functionality of the uh, raster link. It comes in the raster link as standard. So even you have never used it, it's there as long as you have raster link 5, 6, 6 plus or 7, right? When you can use this or when you should use this. First, if customer has got less than five colors to achieve. If customer say, hey, I have this photography, you know, which has the uh, more than 10,000 colors, wants to match exactly, it's not going to happen. Right? So sometimes you can, you need to say this, okay. It's not impossible as long as you do the, uh, you know, RGB, you know, you know, RGB and what's the, uh, you know, just pick up the color of the, uh, you know, the display and convert to CMYK. You can probably do, you know, within, within probably two to three years of uh, you know, knowledge base or probably, you know, work individual pixel for the color, for the color matching. All right, but let me go back. Um, if you've got, you know, less than five, colors to match. <coughs> Doesn't matter if the five colors is in the same job or a different job, but at least customer has some type of the targeting color to print. Right? So now what you can do is the uh, you know, color matching. Right? Doesn't matter if customer has got the uh, that um color on the printed on printed on printed on a vinyl already printed on, printed on sublimated for the fabric already, or printed on phone case already, or has got the, you know, the photo of it. So anything will work. Let me show you how you operate this. But you don't need to, you know, the choose whatever, you know, the choose, uh, you know, specific print at this moment, but because we are just doing for the, uh, you know, the one of the function. <laughs> In Rasta Link 6, I have a plus and a version 2.1. I've got a function, sorry, under the tool, we've got a color chart function, RGB, CMYK, special color. I'm not gonna go through the difference for you know, all three because I only have an experience of work around with the CMYK color chart. <laughs> what it did is the, and as soon as you click, you know, there's a secondary display comes out. Okay. Okay. If you have ever, if you have never worked on this, I think you won't have the any uh, idea of what it is and how you set this. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna give myself the uh, one of the example that okay. I'd like to get the uh, you know nice Coca Cola red, nice Coca Cola red. Okay. Let me put this one. Uh, Pantone uh, matching system. For, is that 485? Yes, 485. Well, it's just what's showing now this play, but the 485 is sometimes the people say that they, you know, they would like to get this PMS, PMS 485. To me, PMS 485 is, you know, this, well, again, this is just a deal what this play is showing, but uh, basically what you can do is the, uh, you know, asking PMA. For what's the uh, you know LAB value of the 
uh, what's the LAB value of the uh, you know, thing, you know, sometimes. <laughs> but normally the Pantone matching system, the Pantone is not opening or disclosing what's the uh, you know, LAB value of this color into the public, uh, public space. They sometimes open as a request as long as the uh, people is in a registered vendor for their software or printers and so on. Um, the Mimaki headquarter around the department, you know, getting, you know, the when Panton, uh, Panton is releasing the new color, the new color, you know, they getting their confidential information, what's the LAB value. But uh, normally LAB, the correct LAB value is not shown in the anywhere in the uh, uh, anywhere in the website, you know, in the public public space. So some someone says like, uh, hey, LAB value of uh, you know, 485 is this, this, and this, but someone says a different color. But at least you can get close to like, someone say it's a 68, someone might say like it's 65.5, someone says 64. So it's not really you know, too much far away, but at least you can get some type of idea of the uh, what's the LAB number of the you know, Pantone, right? But at least to work on the you know, color matching, rather than the LAB value, you need to have from the customer what Pantone color and the Pantone, Pantone chart sheet they need to achieve. Because sometimes they have the you know, really washed color a Pantone chart, so they want to know if this is true or not. So the, your first mission for the color matching for customer is if customer is looking at the, you know, what customer is looking at. All right, if customer say on the phone, hey, I want to achieve Pantone 485, it does, really doesn't mean anything because customer is not really say anything. And the customer's customer may say PMS 485, but for customer probably doesn't know what it is, but just want to, you know, quickly print something for, you know, their customer's customer. But anyway, you know, let me try to achieve this one, and I'm going to show you how you achieve this with this chart. All right, I'm going to make the uh, PMS uh, 485 test. <coughs> right after this, before you actually generate the job or the you know the file or a color chart generates the color chart, you need to tell what's your base color number. All right, depends on the how or what you need to achieve. You can select one or two or four. This is the default one. So default one means that the you know, okay, you've got you decide the you know CMY 50, 50, 50, 50, which is this one, and it's just an increasing and decreasing CMYK value on the you know as much as this goes to left, right, top, and bottom, and each page is like this. If you change this to, if you change this to two, <laughs> what you've got is the, uh, you know, you have, um, okay, instead of we, you have the, uh, you know, the base color, the triangle in the center, you've got a triangle in both sides. Right, the number four <laughs> is the base color for four. What it is is instead of having a, you know, only one triangle or two triangles on both sides, we've got a total of four triangles in the four corners. Right, really depends on what you need to achieve or how you want to achieve to what customer wants. You know what the basic base color you use, you know, can be different. At this time, I'm going to just go, you know, the most simple way, just to go to a basic color one, you know, the, just one. So we can achieve, you know, we can look at the, how we can achieve to the, uh, uh, you know, this uh, PMS um, 485, All right? What we know about is the, you know, okay, PMS, in order to make a good red, doesn't matter if it's close or not to the PMS 485, we've got, let's say, magenta 100%, yellow 100%. Right, so we made the you know, base color here. <coughs> All right, now you can see what it is. It's the, I you know, okay, we've got the you know, 100, magenta yellow 100% in the center, 
but we have some color on the left and below and uh, on the corner, but we have just a cross. What this means is the, uh, because I went out 100% for magenta and yellow, and this chart is showing, hey, in a wide direction, we go for the uh, cyan 1% each and patches 1%. So what it is, is the uh, wide, you know, with this direction, we have cyan goes to plus and minus. But this moment we've got cyan 0% here. So the one, one on the right side should be cyan minus, minus 1%. But there's no minus number for CMYK, you know, the concentrations. So that's the reason we do not have the you know, any color in here. Same to this one, magenta and height direction. It says 1% increment for each patches, but magenta 100% is already 100% here. So we don't have 101% for the color. That's the reason we have this grayed out. <coughs> All right, what we what I'm gonna show you now is that this. For example, if I put cyan one percent, you can see that the you know, instead of it has a cross, we have you know some kind of color. Because I just went up cyan one percent for the for the width direction. So that's the reason you know, we have you know new color available, which is cyan zero percent. So it's basically it's moved from our right side to left side from what I did. And if I do magenta 99%, here we go. You've got the another color in here. So this is how you can see the relationship, you know, relative between the base color concentration and width direction in here. What I'm gonna do is the in order to achieve that color <coughs> for PMS. Probably what I want is the, uh, you know, I'm going to just go, you know, cyan, maybe 5%, magenta, 95%, yellow, 95%, black, probably 5%. On the width direction, because cyan might be a good effect for the and making, you know, better red color, no one knows, right? That's the reason I'm just adding 5% cyan, but I, I just want to see. <laughs> See, I know what it does for every 1% of a changing. Same thing for magenta. So I know that the 100% is better, but however, you know, I just want to give a try for the magenta to change, you know, a little bit a low percent and making uh, just a possibility of the, uh, you know, the chart to make it bigger. So what I'm going to do is the, you know, I'm going to just do this. And at this moment, we've got an only, uh, this is 2D printing. So left to right side, we only have one change for cyan. Top to bottom, we've got a magenta change. So if we want something else to change, let's say yellow, <coughs> we only have a uh, you know, choice for page direction. So if you want to change the, uh, you know, the yellow, what's going to happen is that it did not change anything for this page but it actually increase or decrease the number of the page here. All right, let me do plus minus five page. So it's including uh, 11 pages. So let's go minus and let's go plus like this. But it's like a minimum change because yellow is uh, you know, less impact, uh, less impact color and I'm only changing to every 1% of the color. So let me just try again another, another thing. I'm gonna just change every 5% and I'm gonna do yellow for like a you know, base color over 75%. Then let me see, you know, how it's changing. All right, you can see like as much as I go to lower page, you see like a less yellowish. As much as you go to this, Okay, you can get to the, you know, the more yellowish. <laughs> and what's important is the you know, how this color chart work is the after you printing, basically you need to compare with Apple and Apple. Like right? you need to compare what's been printed from a printer and what customer has their color chart to achieve. And you need to uh, compare side by side. So knowing what color concentration for each label is important. Now you can see, you can change the, uh, you know, what's the size of the patch 
if you want to make it bigger or smaller, or if you're okay with this space, because 20 millimeter, two centimeter is a little bit small to what you need to, you know, um, compare the color side by side. Uh, Sometimes you are required for your eye, uh, you are required more than five centimeters, you know, uh, if you want to have the distance close to the 50 centimeters to the printing, you might need to make it bigger to uh, um, 50, uh, 50 millimeters, five centimeters of the patch. But however, you know, you might need to print this for like a couple of times to, you know, the, get the color to cross. So I think first try 20 millimeters is, you know, big enough. And interval. Interval is what the space between the patches. <laughs> uh, let me see if I need, if I can change the size of the, uh, you know, these letters, which is important. Uh, Let me just do increase the margin. This one. What about this? Sorry, I just can't remember how you can get the uh, bigger letter at this moment, but there should be the way to do Ah, this one, sorry. The font, you know, you can do the point here. No, this is only the top, so. Sorry for that. I just uh, can't remember what it is. But anyway, you know, after you set the uh, you know color chart, you know, you just go file, and click either create job or create PDF. All right. <laughs> if you wanna straight to the printing, just the create job. So it will ask you the you know what printer you want to print. You want to create a job, right? But the reason we've got a create PDF option is that for customer, if they have the uh, you know the different printer to print this chart, so you can create PDF job. So you know the customer can bring this PDF job into the other printer to print the same chart. Right. For the meantime, I'm gonna just create a job here. <coughs> After that, you can close now. And you've got the new file in here. Okay. I thought it comes uh it comes uh you know multiple PDF, you know, multiple job for the PDF. But anyway, <laughs> let me go back to uh the tool. After you print this one, after you print this chart, right? Uh what you have is the, uh, let me just go back. Okay, what you need is first, you need to have the, uh, uh, you know, the label, which is the closest color you can achieve, and then read the label. It should say CMYK, whatever the number, right? As long as you can get, you know, close to, uh, you can get close to uh, the uh, probably the <clears throat> not like a difference between pink and red, but as long as you can you know determine hey you know this is you know like close enough to get to it, then you don't need to print this anymore because we've already you know played like a close to 100 percent. You can go more than 101 percent. So rest of the thing is just you know what you do from a rustering side. From rastering side, let's do this. Uh, you know, next step is once you get the uh, <coughs> once you get the uh, uh, you know the closest once you know the closest color from color chart printing. The next step is the you know read the, the load the customer's job and uh, you know click uh, you know whatever the part that you need uh, you need to you know duplicate the color for it, and then. Um, select and click replace, and you replace the uh, uh, the color to what you printed from a color chart. Let's say magenta 95%, yellow 95%. But if you know that there, it wasn't enough, and you need to get more to you know more like. Well, let's say you cannot really go more, but less magenta or less yellow or, you know, I, well, only the thing you can do is the, you know, adjust the orange color, right? 
So I haven't run the uh, you know, the CJB 300 uh, you know orange color chart before, but I'm not sure if a tool includes a CMYK color chart includes orange. But at least you can try adding an orange from a spot color replacement and run. Right. This is the reason I said that the, uh, if customer has less than five colors to achieve, because you need to do this process for every single color. So it's not a worse job for the uh, doing 200 colors to achieve as is, but this is something to achieve for the, uh, you know, less than just a couple of colors. If you have more than 20 colors, let's say 20 or 30 colors, what customer needs to achieve in a different jobs, then this will be done, you know, this needs to be done by, you know, utilizing a Mimaki Profile Master. But before you go into, okay, okay, let me just, you know, just finish this. Because, you know, that's all what the color chart, you know, color chart function does. <coughs> For customer who would like to achieve more than, you know, numerous colors easily, well, I can say that the, you know, the uh, profile master, Mimaki profile master MPM is actually doing that job. I will doubt it because Mimaki profile master is not the one to achieve numerous color to what customer wants. But Mimaki profile master is to create ICC profile. ICC profile means that the, uh, whatever the standard for international color concept. So as long as what, you know, what customer has as their, you know, their preference of their, you know, their color is not following to the you know, ICC, which is a combination of how, what, what, how the color looks like comparing to CMYK balance, then it's not even achievable from a, you know, MPM. Well, I would say it's achievable with the ink, but MPM is not even color matching function, color matching software. It's only a color, you know, generate the profile generation software. Uh, following to the, uh, you know, following to ICC color combination for LAB. <laughs> so this is basically the way, you know, the, you know, I thought it's important before you even start, you know, talking about the color management and how you, you know, achieve the color to what customer wants. You need to know what possibility, what is possible, you know, logically, you know, from, what, you know, what you can utilize and what's not possible, right? Um, there is a way to achieve like a 20 or 30 colors from a one, you know, the profile, the one, uh, one profile. This is from the, uh, not from Mimaki, but the you know, others sometimes, you know, has their profile, you know, uh, apart from ICC colors, you can actually embed the, all the color replacement. Like if you've got the, you know, the, <laughs> this spot color from something, you know, it goes to CMYK balance, such as CMYK balance, for example. But it's just an embedded software. You know, you need to color match anyway for individually, and you you just embed the and you, know, you just export those you know special color combination from what customer wants to the profile. So there's no not really the uh, uh, important functionalities involved into that uh, you know particular you know color matching software. What I'd like to go is just going back to what we spoke about in the beginning regards to the color matching. Color matching. Uh, what are these? Perceptual, saturation, relative, absolute, and gray balance. <laughs> gray balance is easy. Gray balance is basically it only prints what uh, it only prints what the ink color stands for, All right? Just an easy, easy explanation though. We've got magenta, cyan, yellow, black in eco solvent ink, and the illustrator people make the graphic in a CMYK. However, if you go to dye sublimation printer, you have magenta, blue, and yellow, and black. But the customer always choose the you know, CMYK for their artwork. <coughs> right, the reason we've got, well, then, you know, if customer, you know, brings CMYK data to the, uh, um, to the, you know, the magenta blue, yellow, and black 
color printer for dice sublimation. It will print CMYK as customer ones. But the reason we've got the you know, blue for dice sublimation printer is because there is more demand for blue to print for sportswear rather than the cyan. If you go to you know, the football team in the European and uh, you know Brazilian, 80% of the team uses black. Less than 2% of the team uses blue. Ah, sorry, uh, sorry. 80% uses blue, only 2% of the team uses the uh, uses the uh, cyan, all right? But if you say cyan, that's really light cyan, or you know, probably light blue side. So for us, you know, rather than having cyan ink for dye sublimation, we, we was to have the blue ink, all right? The reason is because <coughs> How you can print the blue from uh, you know how you can print the blue from Adobe Illustrator. The easiest way is the make a color cyan and click here, you know, select a gray balance. That way, you know, everywhere which says cyan will print with blue. So customer can just edit the edit the, the artwork in the Illustrator wherever needs to be blue as cyan. And you just tell a raster link to print a gray balance. So it will only uh, it will print the ink color combi uh, combination. So <coughs> it will print um, the you know, cyan part as blue. But be careful that it will apply to the every single uh, you know, color combination. If you've got same job, if you have a cyan where you want to print a blue, or if you've got a purple which is a magenta 100% and cyan 100%, but would like to print magenta and cyan. But if you keep gray balance here, it will print more to the bluish purple. It won't be purple. How you can avoid that is uh, you go to the, uh, uh, we can go here. Uh, you need to go to the, I know, the one of the uh, perceptual saturation relative absolute, and you just click the pure cyan which is the ink or color, um, the ink or color uh, configuration, which cyan, only cyan is included to print with only a cyan channel, which is blue. Right, I, I don't want to be so, so long for talking about this in this uh, short period. So I'm gonna just go to, uh, um, uh, explanation of these. Okay, these for perceptual saturation, relative, and absolute. In general, these are called as a, uh, these are called as a rendering intent. So you just can go to rendering intent. Let me put what is rendering intent. <laughs> In rendering intent. Uh, okay, choosing a rendering intent for your inkjet print. Is there somewhere explaining about this? All right, in the rendering intent, Wikipedia, well, which color wiki, <laughs> you know, it states express absolute caramelic, relative caramelic. Perception and saturation. Okay, just follow to, you know, well, you know, I won't be, I, I can't be too long today. So, you know, I'm not going to explain what that is for individually, but uh, um, just to quickly explaining what that is, is, <laughs> all right, in your photograph, you took from the, you know, nice sunset, nice, you know, color of the grass, or nice color of the uh, sky, right? But there is a color that ink color cannot achieve, but there is at least a color in the photograph. So you have an option to tell that, the, uh, hey, how you would like to print this color to. It's easy to say, hey, I want to print this color to this color as much as we can go, right? The problem is that if there are the multiple colors, including here red, here a little bit less, here a little bit less, here within the ink, uh, uh, within the ink, ink color gamut. If you have such a color, you know, included, which normally happens, in that case, 
you know, you, even your photography looks good, but when you print, if you say, hey, you know, convert this color to you know, maximum magenta, convert this to maximum magenta, convert this to maximum magenta, what's going to happen is that you cannot see any, uh, you know, any rendering or any uh, difference of these colors. But like that way, if you have like maximum nice gradation of a sunset within your, you know, within your photograph, but on the end, after printing, this color just looks the same. So which doesn't look good. This is how you can get the, from a rendering intent. I suppose this is from a saturation. <coughs> if you choose saturation, what's going to happen is that everything outside of this direction will just print the same color, which is the maximum ink color. Everything in this direction will print in here. Everything in this direction will print in here. So you will get the maximum color density output, but you will miss a contrast. As an example, if you go to the, uh, I think we got the perceptual. The perceptual means, you know, perceptual is you know, what has more impact to your eye. That means, doesn't matter if you have a really shit ink, which does the you know, washed out magenta, yellow, and blue. But what's going to happen is that as long as you are, your profile knows the maximum gradation within your ink, uh, you know, your ink from 0% to 100% without, without saturating within the ink color, the rendering intent, the perception is smart enough. If you've got the maximum this color, let's print here. But if you've got this color in the middle, let's print a little bit less. If you want maximum ink color gamut, let's put a little, little bit, little bit less. That way, even you have the you know, lots of out of the gamut colors, but on the end, after printing, you will see everywhere, you will see the you know, rendering in everywhere, in the, everywhere, everywhere in the printing. Because that's how the, I know, the, Color management, the you know, raster link will actually shrink those you know, unachievable color within the achievable color into the, uh, you know, getting you know, the best impact to your eye. All right, let me just try to explain this one, uh, which is the relative. Relative is, uh, let me open this one too. <coughs> Relative is basically, if you've got this color, of course it will print the maximum, right? But if you've got this color, right, it will actually, you know, it will actually calculate the distance from a white point of the ink gamma to the maximum, and the, white, the distance between the white point to the what the next color to achieve, and it has the same shrink rate to the uh, you know, maximum color input. So for example, this one goes to here, this one goes to here, you know, that type of the thing. So, you know, in that case, what's gonna happen is the, you know, if you have like a skin tone within the, you know, your photograph, but the skin tone will also have the, uh, you know, little bit changing to the, you know, towards to the white point. So sometimes you will get the, uh, <laughs> you will get to the, uh, um, how you say, uh, unexpected result from a relative. On the end, um, what the Mimaki used to have is, the, well, we don't have this anymore in rastering 6, but we have the you know, default setting in rastering 4 or below. That way, you know, what we have is uh, we've got a perceptual for a color, a color, a color matching method. And we've got Mimaki why do we make it CMYK as a, uh, as a you know, input color? So this was the, you know, the previous setting, you know, before we even have the, you know, this Mimaki uh, high contrast, the Mimaki expand color, or uh, the uh, 2013 signs. So most of the sign writer was printing with this setting. But now, in order that as a default setting of uh, Mimaki raster link 6, we've got Mimaki expand color, and those are relative. <laughs> the reason we've got relative is uh, Mimaki expand color is again to not to 
not to focus on to the uh, you know, solid color, but it is focusing to the uh, you know, middle toning or half toning for the skin tone in order to compete against uh, you know um, the, as our competitors. So you know, for for example, for the you know, people who is doing the car wrapping, I would say that the, you, know, you should really understand what Mimaki Expand Color does. And you know, at the installation and training for the customer, you should really change to something else. At least perceptual, perceptual, and uh, you know, why the Mimaki CMYK? Or if customer has got the an orange ink and would like to have some type of the like a brilliant color for orange, then 2013 for sign. So I think this will be a best setting for the um, sign writers who really doesn't care about the, what's the accuracy for half toning or grayness for half toning, but just would like to have the maximum pop up for the you know sign graphics purposes. But anyway, if you ask to customer that say, hey, do you want to really pop up the color? No one will say no. Everyone say yes, I would like to get the maximum colors. And if you ask to customer, hey, how much of the I know, how much do you need a color matching? No one will say, oh, I don't care about the color matching. Everyone's supposed to say, I need to have a hundred percent color matching, right? So you really need to, you know, work out with customer. Hey, even customer said hundred percent, hundred percent is not going to happen. What's the, you know, relevant, you know, what's the reasonable achievement for, you know, what customer is doing. So it's, you know, part of the really, you know, difficult job to achieve rather than let the machine to let the machine to uh, you know operate in you know, a serviceable condition because you need to convince the customer regards to what customer do not know about. Uh, any questions for today's session? Let me just uh, you know close uh, stop recording and I 